Hey guys, um, April here. If you didn't know me already, hi, nice to meet you. If you have waited around for however many years it's been since I posted a video, thanks for waiting around. I feel like um, the, the only reason I feel like I need to make this video is because I want to make videos again, not makeup stuff. So if you're here for makeup stuff, sorry see you around because it's I don't even wear makeup all I have on right now are eyebrows and mascara that's literally it so it would be really stupid and kind of fake and phony for me to sit here and make unboxing videos when I don't even unbox makeup ever in my life I don't even wear it. I want to start making videos again I want to start like vlogging and um I've been going to a lot of theme parks recently and I'm building a house and there's a lot of exciting things happening so I'd love to start making videos again but I feel like I can't just jump from one environment in life into another one without some kind of an explanation. So that is literally the only reason I'm doing this. It's not because I feel like um, I owe it to anybody. I feel like it just would be, it wouldn't make sense otherwise. The other reason I wanna do this, so I guess that's not the sole reason, but the other reason I wanna do this is because when I was going through all of these emotions and feelings and questions and issues, I was uh, almost two years ago now, it'll be two years in like January, February. I had no resources to reference. So like I went on YouTube and I tried to find somebody that was going through the same thing that I was going through. So a female married in strictly straight relationships her whole life, um, figuring out that she wants to be the woman. And there was very little to no content about this on YouTube. So. If anything, other than me explaining what happened and trying to make some sort of a transition from old life to new life, I want to help anybody else out there that might be going through it um, and to let them know that you will make it out on the other side. You will. I promise you, you will. It's awful. There's definitely a lot of um, emotions and thoughts that will go through your mind and you'll wonder if it's even worth it, but you can do it. I need tissues. I didn't think I would, but here I am needing tissues. <laughs> I should have worn waterproof mascara. Didn't think that one through. Didn't think I would need it, let's be honest. Also, um, before I get started, if you are here to leave any kind of a negative comment, negative feedback, dislike, whatever, go for it. Have a blast. But I don't give a f I'm just going to say that. I genuinely do not care. I'm a 36-year-old woman. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what your thoughts are. If they're negative, leave them if you want. If that helps you feel better about yourself and you sleep better at night, go for it, honey. But just know it doesn't affect me at all. So if that's what your goal is, keep it moving because you're in the wrong place. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this without going into too much detail because honestly, it's not necessary. Dates are gonna be skewed and off and I just, I can't remember exact time frames when things happened. I don't feel like that's relevant anyway. Just know, I'm gonna do my very best to tell you this as um, rawly as possible. I guess I should go back to when I was a child and um, that I had little friends, children friends, my friends, we were in the same grade, school, etc. And we would um, play games in my basement where we would like pretend we were making out and that sort of stuff. And it was like my ultimate favorite game to play. <laughs> it sounds so screwed up, but whatever, I was a kid and they were kids and that's just what kids do. I always chalked it up to being like exploring and I'm sure other girls or guys maybe even while they were children explored and just um you know you're just playing house that sort of thing but I had fun doing it with my little girl friends then as I got a little bit older from there I would um play with my Barbies get them naked do dirty things to them <laughs> not me like but each other oh my god this is gonna sound so fucked up I would have my Barbies playing with one another girl girl Barbies okay okay then um, my brother had Playboys. I knew he hid them under the bed. Good try, Adam. I found them. And I would 
steal them and look through them and put them back, hopefully unnoticed. Long story short, going back to my history, and this didn't just come out of nowhere, I had always had this side of me, I guess you could say. I know that sounds stupid, but um, like I'm Hannah Montana or something, which I'm just watching on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> but from the time I was a little girl, this was something that I was interested in. I don't know how else to say that. That's it, that's it, that's all there is, okay? So fast forward to adulthood. I would, and you could ask, survey my friends that I would go out with in this time frame, but I would go out to bars and find girls make out with them, blah, blah, blah. Nothing else though. It never went further than that. I just always found girls attractive. I found myself checking girls out often, but I always told myself it was because I was comparing myself to them. I would be like, oh, look at her. She's so perfect. Oh, look at her. She's so pretty. Oh, look at her legs. Oh, look at her nose. Because those are things I hate about myself. So I would compare my nose and my legs to other girls. You get what I'm saying? Probably not, but I'm trying my best. Obviously throughout all of this time frame, adulthood time frame, I was in strictly straight relationships with guys. I don't know how many, not a terrible amount of like actual long-term relationships I would consider like committed, maybe four or five-ish. I think what it was, the problem was, the reason why I couldn't always explore that other side of myself of being gay is because I didn't have any females in my life that I could explore that with. Does that sound weird? Probably. I don't mean like my friends. I meant like if I was going out with my friends to a club, they would want to go look for guys. We would be going to clubs where there were guys, straight guys, straight clubs. The very couple of times that I went to clubs, which was actually Pulse, unfortunately, fortunately, because it was a wonderful place, but with a terrible story, as you probably know. I remember there being a couple instances where there were lesbians there and I felt like real intrigued. That was a long time ago and that was only a couple of times. But again, I didn't feel like I could explore that side. The other thing you need to know as well is growing up, in high school, I was being gay when I was in high school and probably, I don't know how it is now, so I apologize if it's still this way. You were like teased. Um, I remember people calling me a lesbian, even though I wasn't a lesbian or, you know, not out as a lesbian at that time. Um, and being like, it was an insult, you know? So I think my whole like growing up and past high school, I always thought it was an insult and it's a bad thing and why would I want that? And why would anybody want that, right? <laughs> So anyway, um, I met somebody. You guys probably already know this if you watch my channel for any amount of time. We got married. We were together for, I believe, seven years or so. You should also know that. Oh, hi. Cat just came to say hello. Want to say hi? Okay. Winter. You guys know winter. When he and I first started hanging out, um, he was witness to me going to bars and kissing girls and stuff. So um, all along in our relationship, I didn't make it a big deal. I didn't bring it up a lot, but I always in my heart felt like I was somewhere on the spectrum, right? You guys have probably heard this before where it's like gay, straight, and then everyone is somewhere in the middle or like really on one end or really on the other end or whatever. I always talked to him about that and I always said that I was somewhere in here. So anyway, um, we get married. We were living our lives for seven years. Those seven years I've mentioned a few times, feeling like I was maybe bisexual or, you know, interested in that sort of thing. And I don't know, he just kind of brushed it off as anyone would, I imagine, because what what would he, we're married, like what would he think anything's gonna happen? Um, I end up going to school to be an esthetician. Um, while I'm there, I take notice of somebody. And I don't want anyone to ever think that there was any kind of infidelity because I can assure you and I'm looking you all dead in the eyes right now. I would never do that. I suffer from extreme anxiety <laughs> where like I won't be able to eat, sleep, move. I can't breathe. I have panic attacks. If I feel like I did something wrong or something bad's gonna happen. So I can't even imagine cheating on somebody. It's just not in me to do that ever. But I did take note of somebody who was in a different class um, so female, thought nothing of it, carried on with my life. Over the few months of school, January, February, well, it was probably, yeah, January, February, um, we started 
talking just as friends because I was intrigued as anyone would be in my situation, I think. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I was very curious about what this meant and like why I was thinking about somebody, a girl like this. So literally just as friends, um, we were talking about Big Brother because I was big, big brother person and they were doing Celebrity Big Brother and she was also watching it. So we talked about Big Brother a lot. Um, and that was pretty much it, just on Instagram. I couldn't gather why I was feeling the way I was feeling because though she and I were not having any kind of inappropriate conversations at all, I couldn't stop thinking about her. So I sat down with my husband and I told him um, this and I told him that um, I felt like I needed to explore this side of myself and that I didn't know what to do and um, I was very torn and I don't want anyone to think that our relationship was fantastic before any of this happened. Please, if you're in a happy and healthy relationship, you're in a happy and healthy relationship. Granted, if you feel like you're gay and you haven't been able to explore that side of yourself, that takes everything out of the equation, 100%. But our relationship had a lot of flaws. And I think he would probably agree with me. I hope he would, because at this point he's in a happy relationship and I'm so happy for them. And if anything, he, I mean, he moved on pretty quickly also, within a few months, I think. That should prove to him as well and anyone else listening or watching that the decision that was made was the right decision. Though it was difficult for everybody, it was the right decision. And we were not meant to be together in any way, shape, or form for multiple reasons. So told him everything that had been going on, told him that I met somebody, but we were literally just friends. And, um, but I found her attractive and I didn't know what to do. And of course that was very hurtful for him and painful for him. And he was very upset, understandably. And I still didn't know what I was, what I was going to do and what this meant. Um, so I told her that I didn't want to talk to her anymore and we couldn't be friends. And Though it was just platonic, like it was getting, I don't know, I was kind of developing feelings and I, I felt like we just needed to step away and I needed to try to figure things out with my husband. And she was like, no problem, I get it, no big deal, it's fine. And, and like, like I said, we, nothing had developed. It was literally just over Instagram that all of this was taking place, like messaging. Without getting into too much other detail, obviously at some point I decided that my relationship with my husband, ex-husband, it wasn't working out for both of us and neither of us were happy and we hadn't been happy for a while. And um, me meeting someone else that I found intriguing was obviously a problem. Um, and if you were in a relationship with somebody and you are having feelings for somebody else, um, that's not okay. And you have to end your current relationship or um, 100% step away from that other person because it's going to end up in an affair or in a cheating situation and that's not okay at all, ever. If you're ever in that kind of position, just do what's right. That's all. It's not ever worth hurting somebody over. I know it's painful to tell somebody the truth and tell them what's going on and tell them you have feelings for somebody else and tell them that, um, you know, you're gay <laughs> in my situation. But at the end of the day, it's what's best for everybody. And at the end of the day, you're doing less harm. We're humans and we can't help who we meet and the feelings that we have. Nobody should judge anybody else for that, but it's how you handle it and what really matters at the end of the day. It's how you, the steps that you take to rectify that and to fix it <laughs> or um, to move on and to change your life if that's what you choose to do. But it's all about honesty, and that's what I tried to do. I tried to be as honest as possible, and of course, it was very difficult. Told him what was up, told him what was going on. He was, and I'm not going to get into details because this is not any, I'm sure he doesn't want anyone knowing any of the details, and I'm not going to because out of respect, I would never do that. But he was emotional, obviously. Okay, so we are obviously living together in a house at the point. At this point, um, I move into the guest room. Luckily, our schedules were very opposite. So he was working at night and I was working during the day. So we really didn't see each other. Or I was in school actually at the time. I wasn't even working at the time. 
that's a whole other thing. But I was in school at the time. He was working at night, so we didn't really see each other. Turns out that he decided to get a roommate because I was going to be moving out, which is totally fine. So I had to move out, I think it was in April. We ended up getting our divorce finalized right after Easter in April. It was the beginning of April. But we had been separated for probably a month prior to that. Yeah, I think I, I think I told him everything at the end of February, if I'm remembering correctly. So then we were separated for about a month and then divorce finalized and then I had to move out. Um, and I would have moved out prior to that, but it, I didn't know where the heck I was gonna live because my parents were moving at the time. They were in transition. Um, their house was a mess and they lived pretty far from where I was going to school. So that was an option, but it was just not a great option. I was lucky enough that um, a really great friend of mine, Alex, her parents, they live in a beautiful house on a lake right around here. And they have a, like a guest house. So I was able to go move in there for what I thought was gonna be about a month or so. Um, it ended up only being two weeks because I was super lucky and able to get the apartment that I'm currently in right now, much sooner than I thought I was going to get it. I guess I should stop here and back up a little bit because on my Instagram, if you guys follow me on Instagram at all, I've gotten a whole lot of questions about my dogs and this is probably where I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> When I decided to move out, or when, not decided, <laughs> when I moved out, we decided that we we were either going to do, um, like, he would have them for a certain amount of time, and then I would have them for a certain amount of time, we'd kind of switch back and forth, right? I was going to try to get a first floor apartment, that was my goal, um, that didn't work out, I'm on the third floor, which I'm actually really happy about now because of noisy neighbors, but <laughs> whatever. So um, the other thing too was he, again, he was very hurt at the time and that's fine. And um, he also was starting a new relationship, I think, or somewhere in that range. I don't, I don't know what was going on, but um, he decided he didn't want to, he didn't want to see me at all, uh, which was fine. That's totally fine. Whatever. So he said that I would keep Bindi, who was the small mini Aussie, and then he would keep Brisbane, who was our larger border collie mix. And I was like, okay, that's fine. She's small, she can deal in a third floor apartment. That's good, whatever. She won't make as much noise running around, etc." I just remember one day I was sitting on the couch here and I was thinking about Bindi and I was thinking about what's really best for her. And I knew that she loves Brisbane. Brisbane is her best friend and that's, She's known her her whole life. So I knew I couldn't separate them. It wouldn't be fair to Bindi or Brisbane, but I don't think Bindi would have been happy here. And at this time also, I was still in school or I just finished up maybe, but I was looking for a job and I didn't know where I was going to be living or my hours or um, any of those things. Maybe, no, I did know where I was gonna be living. <laughs> Sorry, just kidding. I did know I was gonna be living. I was living in the apartment. I'm sorry, the time frame again. It's very jumbled. I was living here, but I didn't know what my job was going to be at the time. So I had no idea what my hours were gonna be like. And she's a high energy puppy. She was like a year old at the time. So I was like, I just, I felt like what was best for her was to stay there. Also, we put in a pool literally for the dogs so they could swim and they both love swimming. And I knew that they wouldn't be able to do that if I, if I had one of them or both of them or whatever. So for her best interest, I decided that he should just keep them both. I was hoping that he would let me take them for walks around lakes um, when the weather was nice or um, just bring them here for a little bit. My parents actually live right where he lives, so um, very close by. So I figured if he didn't want to see me, my parents could maybe be like the transition because they always loved him a lot and they could make it like an easier child swap kind of thing. Anyway, um, I continually asked to see the dogs over and over and over and over and over and I offered money and I offered vet care and food and I'd pay for anything and he just was uh, very against that. Um, the last time I saw them I believe was in July of 2018. <laughs> I've basically mourned their death like you would if you had a pet that died. I will probably never see them again. And if I do, I hope it's not in a, I'm at 
um, somewhere and then I happen to see them because I know I'll never see them after that and it almost like reopen that wound like I would prefer if I'm going to see them like to be actually able to see them like more than just once. I have no resentment in any of this at all and why should I because I guess at the end of the day this was um me right this was my fault that any of this happened but the dog thing is really hurtful, <laughs> very hurtful to me because he knew how much they mean to me and that that is something that to me is unforgivable. I can't change who I am. I can't change that I, I'm gay and I'm very in a happy relationship with a woman, but because he was hurt and he was angry and he was resentful, he knew that this is the way he could get back at me. I don't know if I'm going to put this part in because I feel like it's painting him in a bad light and I don't mean to do that because like I said, I'm not mad at him. I don't, why would I be? Like he, he has every right to be upset. But um, listen, I know other people that were in relationships, married, there was um, infidelity and the person that was being cheated on still cared about their significant other still wanted what was best for them. So I just feel like it could have been handled handled differently, that's all, I guess. So let's move on to some happy things because I'm done crying. I'm over it, I'm done. This has been, like I said, almost two years now and it's time for me to move on. So I'm living in an apartment. Obviously I've been here since um, April of 2018, May of 2018, just kidding, May of 2018. <laughs> I am living with my fiance, actually, and um, we weren't, she didn't move in right away. She moved in in, I think it was September. So I did live here on my own for a while and rent is no joke, it's real expensive. So that was challenging. By the way, I guess I should introduce you. Her name is Brittany. <laughs> uh, she's not here, she's at work right now, which is why I wanted to film this because I feel like I wanted to just be really like open and no distractions and just feel like I could talk to you guys. She is 23 years old and I am 36, so there is a 13 year age gap. However, um, she acts like she's 36 and I act like I'm 23. So <laughs> somewhere we meet in the middle um, in our behavior and it just works and that's it. That's all there is to it. So we live in this apartment. We lived here for a little while now, or I've lived here for a little while and she moved in last year, about a year ago, a little over a year ago. It's really great, it's two bedroom, two bathroom, it's fine, it's served my needs. However, it was time to be a big girl and get a house. So I knew that I wanted to buy a house this next year because my rent or my lease was up in May. So I was like, well, I want to, buy a house before then. My parents checked out a community nearby and they were like, you need to go buy a house in here and build a house and whatever. Oh, great, sounds wonderful. Who has the money to build a house? I didn't think I did. With the whole divorce situation, I did get money from our house that we um, had together. So though I didn't have much of that left because I had to start all over, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any furniture, no TVs, no anything at all, <laughs> nothing. So I had to purchase everything again. Obviously I had to put money down on an apartment. I didn't, I wasn't working at the time. So I had to live off of some of that money for a while. So I literally don't really have much left of that. I was smart enough to take a chunk of money and invest it into stocks. So I took some of that money, put it down on building a house and yeah, I'm building a house now. I feel like I'm leaving things out because there's so many things to update, but uh, you know, obviously in the next however long I'm going to be making videos for now, um, I'll talk about everything. Um, so where am I? Bil building a house is great. It's a townhome, so it's nothing too crazy, but it's really exciting. That should be done beginning of February, I think, and then we're moving. So that's why this room is full of bins, but like to my right, it's literally like 10 giant storage bins and most of my stuff's not even packed yet. I don't know how I have so much stuff. I feel like I accumulated a lot while living here because when I came here, I don't feel like I had that much stuff. But like I said, I did have to buy a new bed and a new couch and a TV and all this and all that and all these things I didn't have when I moved in. So that's probably why. Brittany and I got engaged in September. We're not planning on getting married for a while. I would like to have a long engagement. Um, probably 2021 or maybe the end of next year. If we do have a wedding, it's not going to be anything too big because, well, there's a few reasons that I'm not gonna get into because they're personal, but I just, 
I don't know that it's really gonna, it would be worth it for us to have a big wedding, to be honest. So we'll probably just do something, just the two of us, or maybe with some really close friends and maybe some family. Speaking of family, I'd like to bring up um, my parents. And throughout this whole process of me coming out, I guess I should talk about that really quick too. It was really difficult for me to come out to my parents <laughs> and my husband, ex-husband. Uh, ex-husband was the hardest, I think, because of obviously all the other logistics that went into it. But then telling my parents was very difficult as well. Mainly my mom. My dad was pretty accepting right off the bat. He well, didn't seem too bothered, to be honest. I think me getting divorced was more troubling to him than anything. But my mom had a really hard time with it. And there was a lot of fighting and a lot of arguing. And she had some strange views and requests that she wanted of me. Um, she didn't want me to tell anyone for a while. And I don't, I don't know. But long story short, at this point, they're 100% accepting. They absolutely love Brittany. I think they like her more than they like me sometimes. She is a real sweet girl, so I understand why. So I guess I came out on the other end, okay. I did sit down to tell them. Um, it was really difficult. I don't know. Maybe I'll make a video all about that too at some point. I don't know. There's just so much to update you on right now. So I feel like I don't want this video to be an hour long. How long have I been recording now? 35 minutes, so it's gonna be a lot to edit. <laughs> I did get another cat too, other than this one that's walking around behind me. There's another one too. She's out there somewhere. I don't know where she is, but her name's River. If you follow me on Instagram, um, you'll be able to see her as well. I'll have a link for my Instagram below, I guess. I don't even know how to do YouTube anymore. I'm sure that there's things that are like, I don't, I'm breaking rules in some way, shape or form. I'm not even partnered anymore. So this video makes me no money. There'd be no ads on it at all. So this is literally just me updating you guys on what's been up. Also, if you are, someone that's in a similar situation to what I was in, like I said before, you will come out on the other end, I promise. It's going to be a difficult road. You might lose 15 pounds like I did. You might not eat, you might not sleep. You might wake up every day with anxiety. You might go to sleep every night with anxiety, but at some point it will all be clear again. <laughs> so, if you guys want to see a video about anything else detail wise, let me know, comment below, tell me what's up, tell me what you want to see, like details on my coming out story, details on Brittany, we can make a video together or something, any of that stuff, you let me know. But I am planning on doing more videos like um, we're going to Disney World, we're going to Universal, um, SeaWorld, whatever. We have passes for everything all around town. So we'll be doing a lot of that with the holidays coming. I have like a literal schedule of like every place I want to go and like things we want to see. If I'm not doing something, I might just vlog here and talk a little bit to you guys, maybe vent some, some things that are going on in life. I've had a pretty rough year um, as far as like car issues go and um, lots of stress in regards to buying a house and getting a mortgage again and all of that. So just things to vent about, I guess. If you're one of my subscribers that I've had for a while, thank you so much for staying here. I feel like I'm going to lose quite a few right now and that's fine. I feel like people stay subscribed to somebody, right, for a while and they forget they're subscribed and someone's not posting. And then when they post again, they're like, oh my god, why am I subscribed to this person? And they unsubscribe. That's fine. If you're one of those people and you want to leave, I get it. It's fine. Um, I'm a different person. You are probably a different person than you were however many years ago when you subscribed to me. But I promise you it'll be a good time if you stick around. <laughs> also, I'm going to be a hell of a lot more upbeat in future videos than I am right now. Obviously, this is kind of a heavy topic and there's been a lot to talk about and a lot going on. So those videos are going to be like fun. Obviously, we'll be at theme parks and doing that sort of stuff. So that'll be a good time. But thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate all of you. I feel like 2020 is going to be a really good year. And I feel like people say that at the end of every year about the next year, but I actually really do feel that way. <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching.